Hey guys, welcome to this video. If you're one of the 158 subscribers that were here before the outbreak, then thanks for staying. And if you are one of the people sent by TechSource, which I know right now there's 3,700 of you, I cannot believe it. Thanks for coming, um, and thank you TechSource for subscribing and um, directing all of your amazing fans towards my content. Now, I don't want to stress this intro too long, so let's just get started. To appeal to most of my audience, I was thinking of making some content about PC or PC building, and I have been considering building a custom PC myself. However, I want to talk about something that I actually know a lot of, so I can flex my... No, no I'm kidding. <laughs> Sway. So, let's talk about Apple Silicon. I have talked about this um, a few times, once in my podcast, which you should listen to. I have a podcast called XI Tech, and I have talked about it in my episode considering the 2020 iMac and why you shouldn't buy it. Now, Apple Silicon are going to be revolutionary. We all know that. But just how revolutionary? Many people have asked me in the comment section, why do I think that Apple Silicon is going to be so much better? And let me just explain. Apple Silicon isn't just normal chipsets. Apple's chips, like the ones in their iPhones or iPads, has always been industry leading. Like if you look at the current generation uh, A13 Bionic, it's way faster and way more power efficient than the Snapdragon whatever, A something something, I don't even care anymore. Apple's chipsets are always the best, the top of the line chips. Even the ones like the A12 that they put in, uh, in cheaper iPad models or say the iPhone SE2 with the A13 Bionic, it means that they are cheap enough for them to consider put, putting into cheaper models of iPhones or iPads. It's not like that the chips are really expensive because they can fit it in basically any hardware. So Apple is really at this point where they can do whatever they want with chipsets and still be the best. With Apple Silicon, they don't even need to put their Apple Silicon their Apple Silicon, their um, iPhone and iPad Silicon into the Macs because they can optimize it better for Macs. So basically they can make a custom series like, well, M is already taken. So like I, no, I is also taken. AM, I don't even know, but like just pretend a number, say um, Z, Z1 Bionic or just Z1 or Z1 Quantum, if you like that. <laughs> But Z1, you can put into, say, the computers, and they can be optimized. So it's going to be better for graphical renders. It can be better for things like screen capture, recording, and even gaming. Although I don't think it's going to be much uh, in the way of putting Apple into the gaming industry once again. But yeah, gaming would work. And just their custom silicon for Mac. It's going to be optimized, it's going to be so much faster and more power, uh, more power efficient. Like, say right now, in my, um, where's my computer? I think it's over there, sorry about that. Uh, in my MacBook Pro, I'm using the Intel i5. But if they can put in their custom Apple Silicon, the battery life is going to go much, much higher than before because it's so much more power efficient, meaning it uses less power and it's going to be faster. If you compare, say, the iPad Pros, uh, A12Z Bionic, to other cheaper laptops, you can see that it's much, much faster. And that's only one chip. Apple can be able to fit multiple chips or have multiple cores in the chips that they put in their, um, say, Z series. Now, um, just saying, do not take my word for it. It's not going to be called Z. I can assure you that. Probably, <laughs> um, I'm just saying Z as a letter uh, replacement 
or just a placeholder name. So yeah, don't don't take my words as um, as concrete evidence. But yeah, Apple Silicon and normal chips like Intel's are not even comparable once it drops. And Apple has said it's going to take only two years to fully transition. Now, that doesn't mean two years to transition all of it at once. It means during the two-year period, they're going to release hardware after hardware after hardware, each updating with Apple Silicon. So that means um, you should be able to see this Apple Silicon hardware in months like October of this year. Again, not concrete, this is just speculation. But February at the latest, you'll see some new Apple Silicon hardware. And that's gonna be industry leading speeds and power efficiency. ARM processors have been proven to be better than, uh, than the normal, I don't know what it's called. Sorry about that. Hey guys, so I just searched it up. Uh, it's called CISC, C-I-S-C, or x86, and that's the architecture that uh, modern computing CPUs are based off of, like the ones from Intel or AMD. And uh, RISC is ARM processors, so that's just the terms for you. And uh, sorry for the interruption of the video. Apple Silicon is based on ARM, and Intel i5, i7, i9, uh, or AMD Ryzen, AMD Threadreaper, these chipsets are based on this other architecture, which was better for desktop before, but now Apple has proven that, um, that ARM processors can be better for desktop and mobile. ARM processors have been used in iPhones, iPads, uh, iPods, Apple Watches for so long that there's no way Apple's going to get this wrong. There is absolutely no way for Apple to mess this up. So if you're looking for, say, a laptop or even Apple products, don't buy them. Wait until Apple upgrade to their Apple Silicon and then buy it. It's going to be the best investment because Apple is most likely going to change the looks like this. It's going to have a redesign for the 2021, maybe 2020 iMacs. No, not 2020. Uh, that's not going to happen anymore. That is concrete evidence. <laughs> no 2020 IMAX will be coming anymore uh, because they just released their other one that I told you not to buy. So 2021 will be the year of the iMac redesign. And even say the uh, MacBook Pros or MacBook Air MacBooks in general are probably going to get a redesign because it's kind of old. And Apple might even put Face ID into it because there has been leaks suggesting that Apple Silicon will be supporting Face ID. Right now, the Intel chipsets cannot support it at all. So it's not that they don't want to put it in, it's that they can't. Now, once they're able to, and if they want to, they'll be able to put in the best biometrics, uh, the best speeds, and the best power efficiency into their computers. And that is what matters in the end. If this video does not make any sense to you, I'm I'm very sorry, and you can leave a comment, and I'll try my best to uh, to respond. Now, I know that a lot of you have been spamming me <laughs> in my other uh, videos, saying that you've been sent from TechSource, and I'm very glad. Okay, I understand that you are sent from TechSource, but um, like, I want to thank you guys for leaving a comment and being so enthusiastic but I don't think I will be able to respond to every single one of you or uh, acknowledge most of the comments because there's simply so many of them. Every single time I scroll through a page uh, and then I refresh, there's another page. So I need to, uh, I've, I've spent such a long time responding to a lot of you guys and liking your comments, but um, I don't think it's going to work on the long term because I, I know it's gonna die down soon because of the exposure rate and how media works. But please don't be offended and don't take it personally if I don't respond to your comments. But yeah, I'm just trying to tell you that I really appreciate it. Now, this has been the video. It's quite short. I just wanted to keep it short and update you guys. Also, thank you for giving me 3,000 subscribers, <laughs> TechSource. Thank you so much. 
And um, that's about it. Click something on the screen right here. I believe it's on the right side or the left for you. I don't know. <laughs> it's here. And um, that's about it. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys next time. Hopefully, please don't want to subscribe. <laughs> ah, just click something, please.